Hey, welcome back everyone. As I said, what we're going to do today is have a look at the tank. I'm going to get that mounted in place. We're going to make up some rubber mounts uh, to hold it there. So let's get started. So what I'm doing, I've got some modelling clay here. And I'm going to put it in place here. And then we're going to put the tank on. Because in at the minute the tank is resting on this ignition unit and that coil so I'm going to try and find out exactly the height underneath and then we're going to try and put some rubbers underneath to build the tank up so it doesn't rest on anything not only might I wear these and damage them I might also wear a hole in the tank as well Pushing it down hard so it, it touches the various places and then I want to lift it a little bit when I do it so that it's not rubbing onto those. Right, so I'll just take the height of, the, of those. Twenty at the back. You know, and just see it there where it's touching the bracket inside of the tank where the bolt hole is. So it's about sixty-eight millimeters. The front one there. Right, Forty-six. Right. So the idea is that that at the front there is going to be replaced by a rubber for the tank to rest on. Now while I was looking about my parts bin, not only did I find that, I found a, a piece of bar here which was already threaded, so that was lucky. So I just need to cut that to length and weld that in place there. Either side at the front to stop the tank from moving backwards and forwards, so side to side, I found these rubbers. So I've cut the end off one of them, so it's just like that. And I'm going to drill a hole in here, put that in, and a nut on the back. Same with the other side. The centre of the tank here is where the bolt hole is. In the middle of the tank, you can see it there. So all I need to do there is put a post up there. I was going to put that post, which actually fits through the inner hole in there. So it'll be sticking up past it. Then what I'll do is I'll put these rubbers on until so they'll be resting against the tank until the level up to the top of there. And then the bolt will go on because this will have to be tapped and that will keep everything compressed down and the rubbers will be pushing the tank down and the tank's getting pushed onto these rubbers. At the back here, I'm going to put two rubbers, and I found these as well, other ones I had. I'm going to put a bar across here, but I think I'm going to have to kink that bar a little bit to lift these up to the right height. So I'll have it kinked up at both sides with one of those rest on either side. And again, the other one, I've cut the top off already, just with a standing knife. And what I've done at the bottom, where it's got sort of a wash around, I've cut part of it away. Now that's, be that's because it's going to be sitting inside of here, in the tank, so that the tank doesn't wobble from side to side. It's got the other two rubbers at the front, at the top, but here, to stop it, Go inside the side, I'm going to put those there. So as it's moving, it's hitting against this rubber rather than hitting against the metal washer. So if it does that, it's going to end up wearing away at the tank at the, at the sides, end up with a hole in the tank. So that's the idea. So I'm going to get on the lathe and on the bench and start making some of these parts. Right, so I'm going to look at the rear tank mount. 
these are the two rubber bungs and see I've cut off one side of them and they're going to fit in there either side and then we need a bar in between to bolt them and that's going to go on top of the the main frame now the only thing is that it's not high enough we need it about another 10 millimeters higher so I'm going to try putting a kink in here so that it goes down then back up again Right, so to bend it, I'm going to put two nuts, one on the end there, one on the other side, and I'm going to nip it in the vise. So I'll just hold that in place with a bit of masking tape. And these nuts are actually about 10 millimetres thick, so it's the height which I want. So it's one on that side, and I've kept the flat of the nut that way. We'll put one on the other side but not too far away. It's got to be quite a sharp bend in this. See that? So we'll now just put in the vise and see if it bends okay. And so that's one of them. A quick check of the height. Yeah, it's more than enough. Move the rubber on. Yeah, 25 millimeters is perfect. That's what I was aiming for. It's 20 millimeters, which bring it up to the level of the ignition unit, and that gives us an extra five millimeters clearance. So I've got that on. So we'll just do the same on this side, and hopefully that'll do it. So I'll put the nut onto there. in the vice again. So that's it. Need to drill the end to put rubber on that end and cut and drill this end to put the other rubber onto that end. Right, so a measurement here and we'll try and mark things out. Tape on so we can see what we're doing. So, the width of the tank, let's see. Bottom on there, it's just over 75, about 78. So, these two have got to be 78 apart. about there. So the centers of that 49. Right so they need to be 49 millimeters apart. So 
let's see if I just put a mark on here on each side to get a, a guide so I get the hump in this bracket central so I'm just putting a, a mark about 10 millimeters out see how far apart they are let's see, so that's so it's 64. So 64, take away me 49 is 15. So I want to be about seven and a half in from each of those. So one hole about there. So that's where they want to be. Right, so find the centre and then we'll get the centre punch, mark them and then drill them. Right, so just rounded the corners off a little bit, ground them, and then sanded them. So, pop these two onto here. That's it, nice snug fit. Seems like it's a little bit narrower at the bottom here of the tank than where the uh, where the wooden's are going to sit. Maybe able to slide it on forward or we'll see when we get it on the bike. Right, so now I've got to try and weld that onto the frame ensuring that it's central so the tank's going to sit nice and central so we'll go across the bike with that now right so i'll just put the bracket on there with a magnet holding it in place and i'll just try and get a spot on it and then we'll try it with a tank on this is where we see if that Tank's going to fit all oh, right with those rubbers. I said it was tight at the bottom. Right, so that's uh, okay. It looks looks right. Quite important to get the tank straight, I know. So. So we'll have a look at the centre mountain now. In fact, no, we'll look at the front one next. Worry about that. If you notice, I have screwed these two on, the two rubber bungs. Now we need this one to sit there. See that? It's yeah, it's just over 45. So the idea is to make that about 55 millimetres high. That's including the rubber. So I'll need to cut it off down here and then we'll get that tacked into place as well. Right, so I've got the front one cut the length and um, I've chamfered it all the way around. So we'll put it on and I'm just going to hold it in place there with a little bit of modelling clear. Just while I get a couple of spots on it. And you can see now it's uh, we'll have got a line above the ignition coil.
Right, so we'll give it a tank another try. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll put a little bit of modelling clear out here. Just a couple of spots and we'll see how far down they get they get squashed. And that'll tell us how much clearance I've got there. So at the back here. Be enough. Right. That's looking, uh, looking fine in the right place. You can see there we've got about six, seven millimetres all the way down, so it is going to clear that. Right, now I, I will need to put another spot on the other side of that, but we'll now look at the centre one, and that, if you remember, is going to be to hold the tank on, and it's going to go through, through the centre of the tank here. And this is it here. I'll just have a look. Now that should be estimated about 80 millimetres just to take it up through the tank. So I'll just check that again to so we'll put this in place. So, so that's looking okay. So the next thing Cut this down to 80 millimetres and then we'll get that welded in place. So I've got that cut the length and um, I've rounded the corners a little bit there so that when the tank goes on it, it centralises easier and I've chamfered the bottom to help the weld get in. I'm just going to hold it in there with a magnet. So we'll get a spot on there. We don't want it too strong because we might want to wriggle it up a little bit. Right, that looks good, so I'm going to try and take the tank off without knocking it and get it welded round. Right, so that looks nice and strong. Just try and put my tank in place. Okay, well that's it on. I'll put a couple of these rubbers in here so that they're just sitting proud of that bar. So that when I put the washer on, then the bolt on top. That will pull them down be nice and tight. Right, I've put two of them on.
yeah it's nice and solid that's not going anywhere so I'm quite pleased how that tanks went I think the next thing is going to be the battery box I'll just show you what I've got here this is the idea I don't know if it's going to work I've got a one of these old brass fire extinguishers I'm going to put that on the other side under the sink under the seat under the sink and then cut this open I'm going to shorten it uh, polish it up so it's nice and shiny and I've got these lithium ion batteries I've ordered which I'm going to put inside here so the only sort of like pencil batteries that you'd get for smaller than torch batteries and I'm going to try and make up a battery pack and see if that works it's going to be a bit of an experiment um, it may work it may not but uh, we'll, we'll see and also on this end I want to put the ignition switch so this handle here it turns and it comes out so it acts as a pump but what I'm hoping to do is alter the way it operates and put this key switch without the key don't need the key in I've got the key switch I'm going to put that into here and hopefully turn this to operate the uh, the switch so I'll have ignition then turn it further for the start of the motor then release it and hopefully it'll turn back anyway that's the idea um, just a, another little quirky little novel idea I'm thinking of but we'll see how that goes well I hope you've enjoyed it and you've found something that might be interesting or you might be able to use in your own bikes so I hope to see you again next time everyone so in the meantime stay safe